Hello and welcome to Budget Consultants YouTube channel where we discuss construction costs and planning in Jamaica. If you're planning to build and want to understand construction costs, then this channel is for you. In today's video, I want to do a calculation for the material relative to the first floor of this three-bedroom home that I have on display. In my previous videos, what I would have done is that I would have done a calculation for the ground floor, both material and labor costs, and for the first floor, I have done a labor cost already. So my final calculation relative to this house would be for the first floor material cost. Now, one of the changes I'm making with my presentation is that I will be doing the screen records instead of doing the audios and piecing the pictures. So you can have an idea as to how I come to the totals that I am making mention of. For persons who are doing budgeting and cost control, it is a preference to always want to use the software known as Excel. So I will be going through my calculations on Excel because that's what I would have done in the background. So I'm going to show you how these figures add up. My projection for the first floor for this dwelling is displayed here, where the material total is a calculation of the square footage area, which is 1,138 square feet times the unit rate for material that I'm using, which is $9,333. And I am getting a projected total of $10.6 million. Now the calculation is relative to the first floor material cost is already identified based on the unit and the rates that I am using for material. So I'm just gonna be walking through it. So for provisional, we have Wire nails and wall nails. We have identified two inch, two and a half inch, three inch, and four inch wire nails. And we have identified two inch, two and a half, and three inch wall nails. We have also identified spray paint as another provisional item, as you will need spray paints to be marking different items in the walls, especially for the electricians and the plumbers. After the provisional items, we'd have a calculation for the one by three sixteens, or what Jamaicans refer to as last, the two by four sixteen, the two by six twelve, and the construction ply, or most people just say five eighths ply. Now, all of those items that are identified are under the heading of lumber for rough work. Below that, we'd have a calculation for three eighths steel, half inch steel, binding wires, and all of those fall under the heading of reinforcements. Then we have a sum for the amount of blocks which will be required relative to block work. Now, another heading we have is mortar. So we have mortar for block work, mortar for rough cast and render of walls, mortar for rough cast and render of ceiling, mortar for rough cast and render of window and door jams, and mortar for rough cast and render of columns. And all my mortar related calculations are relative to a total volume. The reason I do this is that I am trying to cut down the amount of items that I am displaying because I don't want my presentations to be too long. But for the persons who understand construction, anything related to mortar or concrete is something that you can calculate based on volume. Now below mortar we have the different elements of concrete and, and that is going to be concrete for the block walls, concrete for the stiffeners and columns, concrete for the lintels, concrete for the belt beams, concrete for the suspended slab. In terms of the suspended slab, many persons would not identify that a part of the first floor covering is a suspended slab as they might have not been able to see it design very well. So I'm going to be flipping the design around a bit. So the suspended slab is here, suspended slab is here, and if you look, take another look, suspended slab is here. After the different concrete items, we have timber frame roof, which is something that I could have added from the ground floor, but based on how construction is done, most projects you wouldn't have a person putting on a roof at a lower level if the project is going from start to finish. So what I have done is that I have added the total for all the different roofs which are in this design, which you can see at the higher level and at the lower level. There's also another roof at the lower level here. So I have added all of those together and I have put a rail to cover all the lumber all the covering, all the capping, all the hurricane straps and felt related to this project. Now one of the items that persons might have not taken note that is on this design is guttering. And there's guttering ar around the higher roofs, guttering around the lower roof. So I have 
put in that in my calculation. Now below timber frame roof, then I have costings for floor tiles, floor tiles accessories, which are tin set grout mortar, bathroom wall tiles, and wall tile accessories, which is the same tin set and grout in this case. Now the next set of items fall under the heading of doors, and they have provisions for 32 inch doors, 36 inch doors, 48 inch doors, which are all internal doors on this floor. And we also have provision for a 60 inch door, which is at the front, it's at the side, and it's at the back of the design. So this is three 60 inch doors. Now our next item is one of the items that customers many times forget, and it's the provision for the door jams, the door locks, and the door hinges. So all of those have been identified. And below this we have the different type windows. We have three different type windows using on this floor. One of the big difference with these windows versus the windows below is that the windows on this floor carry an arch on them. And the ones below, most of them were square. So these windows are coming with arches, arches, arches. And for anybody who have ever bought windows, they would know that windows that come with arches are going to be way more expensive than just rectangular windows. So those windows have been identified. The regular 2x2 two two bathroom windows have been identified. And those are all the costs for windows that I have. After windows, we have bathroom items. And this is where we identify the toilets, the vanity sink, the shower, the vanity faucet, the shower mixer, the cupboard for the vanity, the countertop for the vanity, the shower drain, the flex tube for both the vanity and the toilet, and the angle stop for both the toilet and the vanity. Next after bathroom items is electrical and lighting fixtures. And for this we have two headings. One is electrical deliverables and one is electrical accessories. Electrical deliverables are the items that you see after the electrician has finished. So those are plugs, switches, lights. And below that we have electrical accessories, which are the parts of the electrical work that is hidden in the walls, which is going to consist of wiring, boxes, conduits, and all other additives that the electrician will need. After electrical, we have plumbing items. And for these, we have plumbing accessories, which are pipings, lock-offs, and all the different elements that the plumber will need to execute the job. And we have made provisions for a solar water heater. Now painting is another thing on our list and we have a cost here representing painting accessories, paints, whether it's going to be churl on the outside and regular paint on the inside or it's just going to be regular paint right through. So those material costs have been identified and our final set of items are going to be miscellaneous. And these are going to be garbage removal, scaffolding rental, the material to construct railings, the slab support prop rentals, the exterior moldings, the pergola, the stone cladding, and the delivery of material. Now the exterior molding, if you look at the design, around the windows there's moldings, around the, the porches there are moldings. So that's what we are identifying with exterior molding costs. And then the trellis slash pergola is right here on the design. So the material cost for that has been identified in our Excel here. The stone cladding, looking back at the design again, is at the front. I could have done it on the ground floor, but I am just doing it total on the first floor. When I put the area times the supplier's cost, that is what I am getting. So the total that I'm seeing here is $10.9 million. And this $10.9 million is a summary from where we started the provision, started at number three, and we are ending at number 83. So that's how I get my 10.9. So when I look back at my summary, initial projections, calculations. So the difference that I'm getting, one of them is 38, which was my original projection. And my calculated that I'm getting is 37.9, which is a difference of $250,000. So the approach that I was making mention of when I started calculating on this house is a field approach. Now, when we started this assessment, I was going off the fact that the customer had a possibility, or wanted the possibility 
of saving at least $1.9 million. And based on calculations, based on using trademark rates, based on the customer buying items which you have identified, you are looking at the, the $250,000 that you see on display here. That's the difference. So for the persons who are curious, this is how I, I do my calculations. I would just go in Excel, I would identify what I need to identify, I would calculate them out based on the requirements of the project, and I could come to the conclusion as to whether or not a customer is wasting their time going down a route where there's no possibility of them saving in any major way. So that's my video for today. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you look through it. And for the persons who are still curious, they can calculate themselves. Have a great day.